let us begin with exchange rate regimes gold standard fixed and flexible exchange rate the exchange rate shows the price of domestic currency in terms of foreign currency when any two countries open up for trade then the goods services and capital move in and out of one country to the other in the process the price or exchange rate is important as it is the rate at which trade takes place the demand for foreign exchange occurs there are three systems regimes of exchange rate the gold standard fixed exchange rate and flexible exchange rate after studying this module you shall be able to know the different regimes of exchange rate understand about the determination of exchange rates under the different regimes evaluate the merits and demerits of these regimes there are some basic definitions exchange rate it is defined as the price of one currency in terms of the other currency gold standard in this case each country fixes the price of its currency in the terms of gold fixed exchange rate in this case the central bank fixes the exchange rate at a given level flexible exchange rate in this case the rate of exchange is determined by the interplay of the supply and the demand for the foreign exchange appreciation it refers to a decline in the domestic price of foreign currency depreciation it refers to an increase in the domestic price of foreign currency let us discuss gold standard here each country is ready to trade domestic currency for gold thus in this case no single country occupies a privileged position as the number of currencies and number of prices of gold in terms of those currencies are equal thus in this case every country is free to fix its own price in terms of gold since the ancient times gold coins were used as medium of exchange unit of account and the store of value the gold standard as a legal institution dates from 1819 and in the 19th century germany japan and other countries also adopted the gold standard as the world's leading economic power was britain the other nations imitated british institution and the united states effectively joined the gold standard in 1879 during 1918 to 1939 government effectively suspended the gold standard and financed part of their massive military expenditures by printing money this resulted in higher money supplies and consequently higher consequences in 1919 US returned to gold and in 1922 a group of countries including Britain, France, Italy and Japan agreed to return to gold standard in meeting the external and internal balances. And in 1925 Britain took back to the gold standard by pegging the pound to gold at the pre-war price. However, Britain's price level fell, but it was still higher than that during the days of pre-war gold standard thus to reduce the price level the bank of england followed contractionary monetary policy as a result of this there was serious unemployment in this period this resulted in the onset of great depression in 1929 and as the depression continues many countries renounced the gold standard and allowed their currencies to float in the foreign exchange market However, the US left gold standard in 1933, but it returned to gold in 1934 with increasing the dollar price of gold from $20.67 to $35 per ounce. The countries, in order to correct external balance and internal balance, reduced the international trade. However, it was realized that they would have been better off by having free international trade. and in 1944 bretton woods agreement was made it called for fixed exchange rate against the us dollar 
द डॉलर प्राइस ऑफ गोल्ड वॉज थर्टी फाइव डॉलर पर आउंस एज द कंट्री एक्सप्रेस द प्राइस ऑफ करेंसी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ गोल्ड गोल्ड बिकम्स द ऑफिशियल इंटरनेशनल रिजर्व एंड थस द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड रिजल्ट इन अ फिक्स एक्सचेंज रेट बिटवीन ऑल करेंसीज नाउ वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड सिमिट्री under the gold standard the nature of international monetary adjustment is symmetrical that is whenever a country is losing reserves that is money supply this results in a gain of reserves with the foreign countries and resulting in expansion of their money supplies automatic limits another benefit of gold standard is that it places automatic limits on the increase in the price level including gold this is due to the fact that the central banks cannot increase money supply to grow more than real money demand next we will discuss drawbacks of gold standard the gold standard constraints or restricts the use of monetary policy to fight unemployment attaching currency value to gold ensures a stable overall price level only if the relative price of gold and other goods are stable the use of gold as an international payment system is easy only if the supply of gold is ever increasing moreover the gold standard gives more power to those countries which have large gold production such as russia and south africa we shall now discuss the fixed exchange rate regimes in this case the central bank of a country fixes the exchange rate at a given level there is no market for foreign exchange and the exchange rate is policy determined next the merits of fixed exchange rate regime in this section we present the case for fixed exchange regime there are three main points in favor of this regime uncertainty it avoids the wild day to day fluctuations that are likely to occur under flexible exchange rates these fluctuations discourage specialization in the production the flow of international trade and investment the fluctuations in the exchange rate depends on the elasticity on demand and supply curve on foreign exchange in the diagram we measure r that is the exchange rate on the y axis and we measure us demand for pounds on the x axis the d pound curve shows the average us demand for pounds and s pound shows the us supply for pounds which is elastic consider an increase in the us demand for pounds which results in a shift of the demand curve from d pound to d dash pound this causes exchange rate to rise from r to r dash now suppose the demand curve shifts down to d pound star then the equilibrium exchange rate rises to r star this was the case with elastic supply curve suppose the supply curve is inelastic that is s pound dash the same shift would result in exchange rate to the r double dash and r star the above reasoning clearly shows that there are fluctuations in the exchange rate when exchange rate is flexible these fluctuations disappear in the fixed exchange rate stabilizing speculation it is generally argued that the speculation is more likely to be destabilizing under a flexible than under a fixed exchange rate systems suppose there is destabilizing speculation speculators generally by foreign currency when the exchange rates are rising they expect that exchange rate will rise further and vice versa and in the process the fluctuation in the exchange rate resulting from business cycle are amplified and the opposite occurs under stabilizing speculations next price discipline 
Theoretically, the flexible exchange rates are more inflationary than the fixed exchange rates. This is so because there is a price discipline in the flexible exchange rate systems. In other words, it happens so because the balance of payments disequilibrium is automatically and immediately corrected by the change in the exchange rate and thus it results in importing foreign inflation. Such a case does not occur in fixed exchange rate system as fixed exchange rate impose a price discipline that is a nation with a higher rate of inflation than the rest of the world likely to face persistent deficits in its balance of payments. Now we will move ahead and discuss the floating flexible exchange rate system. In this case there is a foreign exchange market and the exchange rate is determined in this market. We first explain the foreign exchange market. It is the market in which international currency trade takes place. The exchange rate is like any other price in the economy. The foreign exchange trading takes place in many financial centers with the largest volume of trade occurring in such major cities as London, New York, Tokyo, Frankfurt and Singapore. The direct telephone, fax and internet links are the modes of the foreign exchange market. Thus, the foreign exchange market is composed of commercial banks, corporations, non-banking financial institutions and the central banks. The commercial bank plays a central role in the foreign exchange market. Almost all the international transactions involve the exchange of bank deposits denominated in different currencies. The corporations operate in several countries and thus receive payments in different currencies. For example, to pay workers at a plant in India, the companies need Indian rupees. If IBM has only dollars, then it needs to buy the Indian rupees. Thus, the demand for rupees or for foreign currency is generated. The non-banking financial institutions are important institutions of foreign exchange market. Their need arise after the deregulation of financial markets in various countries. For example, the mutual funds offer their customers a broader range of services involving foreign exchange transactions. The final constitute of foreign exchange market is central bank of a country. It is the most regular official participant. We shall now discuss how the exchange rate is determined. The exchange rate is determined by the intersection of demand and supply curve for foreign exchange. Suppose there are two nations and therefore two currencies. One is domestic currency, for example dollar and the second currency called foreign currency is pound. The exchange rate between them is defined as the rate at which two countries trade. In other words, how many dollars are required to obtain one pound. Thus, the exchange rate is equal to dollars by pound. If R is equal to 3, this means that 3 dollars are required to purchase a pound. Now, consider the diagram. Here, the diagram represents how the dollar price R is determined. It is determined by the intersection of market demand and supply curve for pound. In the diagram, on the vertical axis, we measure the dollar price of pound, that is R, the exchange rate between the two currencies with dollars and pounds. And on the horizontal axis, we measure the quantity of pounds. The two curves can be seen, demand curve and supply curve of pounds. The demand for pounds comes from US. It is negatively sloping indicating that lower is the exchange rate or the greater is the quantity demand of pounds by the US. This is due to the fact that lower is the exchange rate, the cheaper it is to buy pounds and use in its own country to invest. The two curves intersect at point E. It is point of equilibrium. Suppose there is excess demand for foreign exchange then the dollar price of pounds that is r will rise to e1 this is shown by point cd in the diagram 
appreciation of the currency. Suppose the US demand for pounds shifted as a result of increased demand for British goods. That is, there is a shortage of demand for pounds and excess supply of pounds. Then the price of dollars in pound that is R will fall. Depreciation of the currency. Moving on to merits of floating exchange rate regime. The case for floating exchange rate depends on three major claims. Monetary policy autonomy. Under the fixed exchange rate, the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of US had the power to change the rate of exchange. The other central bank abroad had little scope to use the monetary policy to attain internal and external balance. However, in the case of flexible exchange rate, the central bank of all countries have the power to control to change or monitor the money supply. For example, consider a country which is in unemployment state. The central bank can use monetary expansion to cure the unemployment. This is possible because there are no restrictions on the value of currency in the flexible exchange rate. Then under flexible exchange rate, the foreign exchange market automatically brings the exchange rate changes that protect these countries from US inflation. So there is no force to import inflation from abroad. Under the fixed exchange rate regimes, the countries can hold their dollar exchange rate fixed by keeping the domestic rate of interest in line with that of the world interest rate. To do that, the central banks used to impose strongest restrictions on international payments. These restrictions were only partially successful in strengthening the monetary policy. Also, they had the damaging side effect of distorting international trade. For example, if the central banks faced unemployment and to counter that expand their money supply. So this results in an enhanced control over monetary policy which would allow the countries to dismantle their distorting barriers to international payments. Then floating rates would also allow each country to choose its own desired long run inflation then passively importing the inflation rate established abroad. Thus the country can insulate itself from the inflationary increase in foreign prices by revaluing its currency and so remain in internal and external balance. Symmetry. It is argued that under the floating exchange rate, the two types of asymmetry that occur in fixed exchange rate will not occur. The two symmetries are one. The central banks fix their currencies to the dollar and thus accumulated dollars as international reserves. Here, the US Federal Reserve played the leading role in determining the money supply. Second, any foreign country could devalue its currency against the dollar, but US did not have the option of devaluing against the foreign currency. These two asymmetries will disappear in floating exchange rate as the countries will no longer fix dollar exchange rate. And secondly, each country would be able to regulate monetary conditions at home. Thus, all the countries exchange rate would be determined symmetrically by the foreign exchange market. The exchange rate as automatic stabilizers. The exchange rate automatically changes in the flexible exchange rate system. It changes due to any change in the demand or in the supply of imports and exports. Now, let us consider a change in the demand for the home country's exports. Let there be a fall in demand for exports to foreign country. This reduces the aggregate demand for every level of the exchange rate. Thus, there is a shift in the demand curve. Consider the figure here. The initial point of equilibrium is 1 where the AA schedule and DD schedule intersect. Due to a decrease in demand of exports of home country, the demand curve moves leftwards from DD1 to DD2. The demand schedule shows exchange rate and output pairs for which aggregate demand equals output. And 
the aa schedule shows exchange rate and output pairs at which the foreign exchange market and domestic money market are in equilibrium as demand falls the transactions demand for money falls which result in a fall in the domestic interest rate this fall in domestic interest rate causes the domestic currency to depreciate in the foreign exchange market and so as a consequence the exchange rate rises from e1 to e2 let us now consider an increase in demand of foreign currencies exports that is there is an increase in demand for imported goods this increases the aggregate demand for every level of the exchange rate thus there is a shift in the demand curve consider the figure here the initial point of equilibrium is 1 where the aa schedule and dd schedule intersect due to a decrease in demand of foreign countries export that is imports rise the demand curve moves rightward from dd1 to dd2 as demand rises the transactions demand for money rises which result in a rise in the domestic interest rate this rise in domestic interest rate causes the domestic currency to appreciate in the foreign exchange market and so as a consequence the exchange rate falls from e1 to e2 next suppose there is an increase in domestic interest rate due to an increase in transaction demand for money this rise in domestic interest rate causes disequilibrium in the foreign and domestic exchange market and as a result aa schedule shifts to the left from aa1 to aa2 this causes the domestic currency to appreciate in the foreign exchange market and so as a consequence the exchange rate falls from e1 to e2 under the fixed exchange rate the central bank holds constant the price of foreign currency in terms of the domestic currency it does this by buying and selling the foreign currency at a fixed rate for this it has to keep reserves of foreign currency under the flexible exchange rate system the exchange rate may change from movement to movement in a system of clean floating the exchange rate is determined by supply and demand without the central bank intervention under dirty floating the central bank intervenes by buying and selling foreign exchange in an attempt to influence we shall now summarize what we have studied in this module in this module we have discussed the three systems of exchange rate the gold standard fixed exchange rate and flexible exchange rate all the systems determine the rate of exchange between any two currencies in foreign exchange market this determination holds true for n number of countries using n number of currencies the foreign exchange market for any currency is comprised of all the locations such as us paris india hong kong etc where the currencies are bought and sold these different monetary sectors are connected by a telephone network video screens and are in constant contact with each other the main function of foreign exchange market is the movement of purchasing power from one country to another the demand for foreign exchange comes from the desire to buy that is import goods and services from other nations and to make investments abroad the supply of foreign exchange comes from export of goods and services and the inflow for foreign capital